Mixed Blood Theatre Company began in 1976 as an offshoot of a social service agency called the Centre for Community Action. A lot of what we do in our uh, theatre is really dealing with social concerns that create a ripple effect of social change. Because anytime anybody goes on stage in America, it's a political statement that uh, we wanted never to be a hyphenated organization. It's not great race-based theatre or political theatre or experimental theatre. Uh, we want to just be good theatre and I think that in the last 36 years, I think we've done a good job of that. I started the Mixed Blood Theater Company when I was 22 in a converted 1887 former Minneapolis firehouse adjacent to Riverside Plaza. The prevailing racial politics of America at the time was the melting pot theory in which there was supposedly this one homogenous American culture that was going to be created. My childhood icon had been Martin Luther King and I didn't believe that he believed that the melting pot theory was really the direction this country wanted to go. And so I tried to create the Mixed Blood Theater to embody his vision, promoting successful pluralism and individual equality. We use comedy and drama and intimate chamber theater and ex musical extravaganzas to provoke thought, uh, to change attitude, policy, and behavior in individuals and organizations. We believe that ideals are actually something to be achieved. We think that utopian society is actually attainable and we use theater as our vehicle to advance toward that end goal. In the same sense that Dr. King expanded his vision beyond just race and really about making all of our society a better place, that's what has happened here at the theater. <laughs> what we call permanent marker. Their people call makeup. <laughs> if we're patient, we may in fact see her shave off her eyebrows and a fine new one with a sharp <laughs> The philosophy of mixed blood has always been taking marginalized stories and putting them into the world in a way that makes them less marginalized. The racial politics of America has evolved and matured since uh, the beginnings of Mixed Blood, and Mixed Blood has become much more sophisticated at talking about it. It's become much more nuanced in its expression of uh, racial politics in all its different areas, in the shows that we tour. I mean, there have been two million students that have seen our touring shows since 1980 when we started touring, and the ones that we do at our own theater, I think, speak to things in a much more subtle way a much more nuanced way because the racism of America has become much more subtle and nuanced. Uh, you know, being an artistic director is really one of the great jobs to make sure you have the right creative team, to make sure that you have the right director, make sure that the cast suits the needs, and make sure the playwright is involved in all those processes so that what's going to be the final product is something that serves audience, creative team, the artists involved, the organization as a whole, the mission. But finding the plays is probably the most fun part of the job. His tastes run to things that surprise him, which I think is great because I love to go to theater that surprises me. Season of plays is like a menu in which each of the entrees needs to complement one another. If you have entrees that have nothing to do with each other, uh, it becomes a less interesting season, I think, for audience members and for those people making it. Why, why don't you start with a new material while I keep trying to figure out Agnes's monologue, and then when I get to the end, I'll get the rest of the script to you. Jack is very committed to the development of people. One of his strengths over the years is that he has really uh, tried to develop young talent in all aspects of the theater. Mixed Blood Theater is where I came of age as an artist. I mean, I think I was a decent actress when I got out of college, but he really put the time into developing whatever raw talent and shaky professional legs I might have had at that time. He got it into his head that I should start directing way before I had even thought about it, and I think he might have come up with the idea that I should write plays before I had even thought about it. He invests in people, he invests in artists, he gives them a professional space in which to evolve their craft. It's an artistic home like no other. Don't you want to be a star? I can make it happen. 
<laughs> uh, writers like Syl Jones, uh, Aditi Kapil, uh, actors like Warren Bowles, Raul Ramos, Aditi. So many people who've been in many shows over many years all are contributors to the longevity and health and future of the Mixed Blood Theater. I would describe him as incredibly devoted to two things. I mean, with all his time and his energy and his attention and his love, to Mixed Blood Theater and to his daughter Taj. I think that my lasting legacy as Jack Ruler will be that of my daughter. I don't know if I'm thrilled or not that she's uh, in theater, but uh, theater was a great babysitter and the fact that she is so good at it just makes me thrilled. There was a long time where I didn't miss a single performance, but now that she's in like 20 shows a week, it's hard to keep up. The proudest thing I have in life is Taj Ruler and the second proudest thing is Mixed Blood. There is a kind of sly little grin that lets you know, oh, the gears are running like mad. There have been a couple of times where we thought, you know, there may be a chance of losing Jack and they were to uh, take over management of a small circus or to run a minor league baseball team, which kind of gives you the sense of, of his interests and all. What drives Jack is an, a really true, deep, honest love of humanity in all its forms. In the 2011-12 season, we initiated something called Radical Hospitality, where we identified different barriers to participation for many people, and the number one barrier we heard over and over again was finances, just the impression of theater in general as an elitist art form, and just the difficulty of the people we deemed we wanted to have in our seats and why they could or couldn't come. And one of our core values is being egalitarian. So we just, the first of many barriers that we tackled this year uh, is finances. So people, anybody can see any show at Mixed Blood without charge. The principle of the matter is show up at the door. If there's a free seat, come on and see a show. Long before the Radical Hospitality Initiative, he had already decided that anyone who lived on our block, which is a huge Somali immigrant population, you know, could come to the theater for free anytime. But that was just a given because they're our neighbors. Um, then he just expanded it. It's quite a change in the very nature of theater. So there's here or there's four together and about halfway up there, whichever you'd like. I'd go here, these are great. The joy of radical hospitality is that so many of these people came because it was free and because we intrigued them and because of the topic that might otherwise not have been able to come if the financial barrier was still in place. So who, who sits next to you is really an important part of the mixed blood experience as well as what goes on stage. Okay, let's go do a play. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.